Kyle Palmieri returns to practice for the first time this season. But what does Palmieri's availability mean for line combinations and roster spots, especially if he's ready for the season opener a week from Saturday? We've got all that and more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Thursday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. You can also follow us now on SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just do a search for Locked On Islanders. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. We have got a lot to talk about. Some big news from the Islanders. Kyle Palmieri back at practice for the first time this season. We're going to break down what it means coming up. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to explore on a future episode of the show, send us an email to LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we talk about whatever's on your mind. You could also follow the show on Twitter at LockedOnIsles. And you could follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at Ice Wars, NYR, VSNYI. We'll keep you up to date on all things Islanders throughout the rest of training camp, the preseason, and all throughout the regular season. And I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So join me for that. Always great to talk a little Isles hockey game time or any time. All right. Kyle Palmieri. Finally, after all this waiting, after hearing from day one of training camp, That his injury is not serious, and he's skating on his own, but he's not ready to join the team at practice. Well, Wednesday, guess what happened? Kyle Palmieri joined the team at practice. And the good news is that Palmieri, because he has been skating on his own, it looks like he should be ready to go pretty soon. Here's what Palms said uh, skating on your own, you can only do so much. It's con- a controlled atmosphere. And when you kind of get out there and with the group and get into some battle drills and stuff, it takes a little time to get back into the swing of things. I'll just take it day by day and just keep trying to keep building. Meanwhile, Lane Lambert says he's been doing some really productive stuff on his own. So I don't think it's that long of a window as far as getting. Palmieri ready to be with his teammates. And we saw some changes to the two different groups now with Palmieri back. And the blue group is in practice on Wednesday, is increasingly looking like the NHL Islanders group, although there are still some extra players on it. And then the white group is increasingly looking like it's the Bridgeport Islanders group. So the blue group, Barzal, here are the forwards, alphabetical, Barzal, Sezikis, Clutterbuck, Engvall, Fashing, <coughs> Gauthier, Holmstrom, Horvat, Johnston, Lee, Martin, Nelson, Pajot, Palmieri, Wallstrom. The defensemen in the blue group, the group that, again, looks like it's going to be the New York Islanders. Aho, Bolduc, Dobson, Ledoux, Mayfield, Pelic, Polak, and Romanov. The goalies, obviously, Sorokin and Varlamov. Then the white group, Jackson Cates, William Dufour, Arno Durando, Ruslan Ishkakov, Carson Kuhlman, E2 Liukas, Kyle McLean, Matt Maggio, Reese Newkirk, Brian Pino, and then the defensemen, 
Dennis Chalowski, Aiden Fulp, Grant Hutton, Travis Mitchell, Callie Odelius, and Robin Sallow with Ken Appleby and Jakob Skarek as the goalies. By the way, uh, saw a report still trying to do a little more digging, but it's possible that Callie Odelius stays in North America this year. So uh, we will try to follow up on that and get some more information. But when you break down the line combinations now from the blue group, Wednesday's practice, top line, Horvat, Holmstrom, and Barzal. Again, not clear why Holmstrom is getting such an extended look on that top line. I just don't see him adding enough juice offensively <coughs> to hold that down. But we'll see uh, how long that goes. Nelson, Engvall, and Palmieri reunited now as the second line. Pajot, Lee, and Wallstrom, the third line. Sezikis, Martin, and Clutterbuck, the identity line, are the fourth line. And then the extra three, Ross Johnston, Julian Gauthier, Hudson Fashing. That is the forward line combinations right now uh, as far as the Islanders are concerned. And, you know, it, it, it really leads you to believe at this point that there's a couple of spots available. And before Palmieri was there, you had five players more or less fighting for three spots. Well, now you probably have five players fighting for two spots, and that makes it a little trickier as far as the Islanders are concerned. And we have to see <coughs> whether or not, you know, these players step up and – find a way to claim one of those jobs. And, you know, the Islanders are in a situation where they're going to have eight days off between the last preseason game and the season opener, because even though the NHL gets underway on October 10th, the Islanders don't play until the 14th. Kyle Palmieri spoke about that at practice, telling the Hockey News it's kind of a weird schedule as far as preseason being over Friday and then seven, eight days uh, before the home opener, but it's practice and we got a veteran group here. We like to push each other in practice and the pace has been high. I've been watching all the practices here, so I'd like to get into a game, but if it doesn't happen, it doesn't make too big a difference as far as working toward the season opener. So we don't know. At this point, whether or not Palmieri will play tonight against Philadelphia or Friday against the New Jersey Devils in the preseason finale. But realistically, we're looking now at five players battling for two spots, assuming Palmieri is ready to go opening day. And that is Hudson Fashing, Simon Holmstrom. Oliver Wallstrom, Julian Gauthier, and Ross Johnston. Those are five players going to battle for two spots now. And we're going to talk a little bit about who would be the odds-on favorites to make the team, who would be the favorites to be, well, I would say, get first crack at playing because, believe me, if guys aren't playing well, uh, Lane Lambert won't hesitate to try to go to somebody else. But we'll see. It's going to be a lot of tough competition on the line. But it also means if you look back at those blue and white groups, that none of the young prospects, your Durandos, your Maggios, uh, your Dufours, they're not likely to make this roster, at least not for opening day. So we'll see how that all plays out. We have got a lot more to get to on today's show. We're going to continue to talk about the five players battling for two roster spots. Plus, uh, Islanders playing tonight against the Flyers. We'll talk a little bit about that. Plus, 
Ryan Polak's expectations and role for the upcoming season, all that and more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets if your first bet wins or loses. And you've been thinking about joining FanDuel. There's no better time to get in on the action. The FanDuel app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options like spreads, player props, over-unders, and a lot more. And hey, NFL, Major League Baseball postseason, NHL futures, Islanders players, so many things you could bet on on FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. So five players, three now, two spots with Palmieri back. And the one thing we see, and, and we do know that with Lane Lambert, nothing when it comes to line combinations tends to be etched in stone because, you know, we've seen him juggle lines often during games when this Islanders team struggles to score and not even score, but produce chances. And sadly, we saw a lot of that during last season, but Five players, two spots. It's Fashing, Holmstrom, Wallstrom, Gauthier, and Ross the Boss Johnston. I think realistically that Holmstrom and Johnston are going to be the guys who are sent down to Bridgeport. Why? Well, Ross Johnston, again, we're talking about his salary cap hit. $1.1 $1.1 million. The Islanders are still over the cap ceiling by about a half a million dollars, a little less than a half a million dollars. You send Ross Johnston down to Bridgeport, you are immediately cap compliant. And it just would probably be the easiest way for the Islanders to get under the cap. Meanwhile, uh, Simon Holmstrom, you could send him down to Bridgeport. Holmstrom, uh, not Holmstrom, uh, yes, Holmstrom would not have to clear waivers because of the number of games in the NHL that he's played, and he would get more ice time. And I think that's important for Simon Holmstrom because he needs to get his confidence back offensively. And he's shown a few flashes in the preseason. He's looked better in at least one of the first four preseason games. But to me, at this stage in his development, if there weren't injuries last year, Holmstrom probably would have played the whole year in the AHL. And I think getting him, you know, first or second line minutes, power play time, and a a larger role, more ice time, I think all of that would benefit him and his confidence. Whereas putting him on, probably the third line, well, that's going to, you know, limit his ice time and probably limit what he's able to do. So I I think, again, the fact that you don't lose him on waivers, it makes sense to send down Holmstrom and then Ross Johnston. That leaves Fashing, Wallstrom, and Gauthier competing for two spots. One is the first line winger with Horvat and Barzal, and the other is a third line winger right now. It looks like opposite Lee and Pajot. Now Lee could still move back up to that first line. I don't like it every day or as you know, I don't like the combination of Lee and Horvat because they're so stylistically similar. But if you do that, then you have, you need two wings for Pajot. And to me, it would be Fashing and Wallstrom or Gauthier and Wallstrom, or Gauthier and Fashing. And what you may see early on in the season is those guys kind of rotating. uh, Or you play the hot hand, or depending on the opponent, you may decide, okay, you know, we need a little more speed in the lineup tonight. 
because we're playing a team that has a lot of speed. So we're going to put Gauthier in the lineup or, you know, we really want a little extra punch offensively. We'll go with Wallstrom or we need someone who can dig in the corners. We go with fashing and two of those three are likely to be playing on any given night. So uh, you, you look at this lineup, there are still many possibilities just because Johnston and Holmstrom are the guys you could send down to the minors doesn't mean they will be the guys that we send down to the minors, but they are easier to send down. And it really, you know, doesn't, it, it makes things less complicated if you do it that way. We have to see in the end what Lou Lamorello and Lane Lambert choose to do. Meanwhile, tonight, Islanders, Flyers in Philadelphia, Flyers, 2-2-1 two, two, and one in five preseason games so far. The Islanders, 2-2 two, and two in four preseason games. And I, I think these last two games against the Flyers and the Devils, this being tonight, the last road game, 7 o'clock Eastern time start, I, I think what you're going to see is pretty close to the kind of lineup in these last two games that we're going to see on opening night with a little, perhaps, you know, guys like Holmstrom and Wallstrom and, you know, Fashing and those guys and Gauthier, they may get a little extra, you know, they may all be in the lineup, the five guys fighting for those two spots. I think we'll see Varlamov in goal tonight and probably see, uh, Sorokin in goal against New Jersey on Friday, but we don't know for sure. And again, I expect that the Islanders will go with a lineup that is more veteran laden. In one of these last two preseason games, we may get a little bit more of a look at uh, some of the kids, give them one last shot at some experience at the NHL level. But, you know, if you were hoping against hope that your Dufours and your Maggios and your Ishkakovs and your Durandos were going to make the team out of training camp, it is looking more and more likely that all of them will start the season in Bridgeport unless there is an injury or a trade between now and then. All right. We've got more to get to on today's show. Uh, we have uh, our player-by-player player look at the Islanders roster continues with Ryan Polak and our Islanders birthday of the day, a speedy forward who was with the team in the early 2010s and uh, really a guy who had one really good 30-plus goal season for the Islanders. Let's see if you can guess who that is. We've got all that and more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at Indeed. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could do the same thing with your business team? Well, if you're building a roster to win the league, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. So you don't need to spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills. You could do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed suite of powerful hiring tools like Indeed Instant Match assessments and virtual interviews. Hate waiting. Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. So, right now, Indeed knows when you're growing your business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for the quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on, Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. The NHL season starts next week, and Locked On has put together the ultimate season preview for the Eastern Conference. You can find the episode available now on this podcast feed and on YouTube. And, of course, I am featured on that 
previewing the Islanders. So make sure you check it all out. All right, we continue our player-by-player -player look at the Islanders roster, what role players will have and what they need to do to be successful on this team this season. And today we take a look at Ryan Polak, the veteran defenseman, 6'2", 216 pounds, uh, going to be 29 very, very soon, as a matter of fact, uh, Friday. He's turning 29. Last year, 26 points in 82 games, five goals, 21 assists. He was a plus 10. I have to say the offensive production from Ryan Polak, a little disappointing. You know, he's got that heavy, hard shot, not always accurate, but you would think we would see a little bit more from him power play wise. He had five power play goals back in 2017, 2018, only had one last year. You would think the Islanders would find a way to use him more effectively on the power play. Look, five goals, 26 points isn't terrible, but if you can get his offensive production closer to the 30-point-plus mark, I think everyone would be a little happier with that. And, you know, he his shots on goal down from his peak in the late 2000s teens last year, 301 shots. He had uh, 358, 382 in back-to-back -back years in 2017, 2018, 2018, 2019. So you got to get a little bit more uh, shots on goal, but you know, Pelic, uh, Pollock rather, great defensively, needs to play that way and be a consistent shutdown guy. Only averaged 20 minutes and 54 seconds of ice time last year. He had 22 minutes or more for three straight years from 2018, 2019 to 2020, 2021. Blocked 128 shots and 140 hits. So I, I, I think... Stay healthy, get that offensive production a little higher, up to 30 to 35 points, a little more on the power play to utilize his shot, and just be that steady defensive presence. And please, and I'm not singling out Ryan Polak for this, but regardless of who he's paired with, the Islanders' defense core as a unit needs to do a better job of just getting that transition game going. Uh, Pollock right now has a $6.15 million cap hit, and he is signed, uh, you know, for a while. And he has been locked up and, and is signed through the end of the 2029-2030 uh, season. And that's important that, you know, he's going to be steadily there for the New York Islanders. A big part of this team, he needs to play his role and be successful for the Islanders to be successful. And I think we will see a lot from Ryan Pollock this year if he stays healthy and meets expectations. All right, time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. And... Yeah, today is the 36th birthday of former Islanders winger Michael Grabner. The native of Austria, first-round pick by the Canucks in 2006. He was the 14th overall pick. Very, very fast, but never really found a groove with Vancouver. Only played 20 games for them and then ended up with the Islanders in 2010-2011. That was his best year with the Isles, 34 goals, 52 points, and a plus 13 that year. And the thing that Grabner always gave you was pure speed. He would have a lot of breakaways, but he wasn't always able to finish those breakaways, had trouble, you know, finishing sometimes. Uh, put it together a 20-goal season after that 34-goal campaign the next year, but then fell off a little bit. 16 goals in only 45 games, 
12 goals in 64. Stayed with the Isles through 2014, 2015, then played for Toronto, the Rangers, the Devils, and the Coyotes. Had back-to-back 25-plus goal seasons for the Rangers, 27 goals in 2016, 2017, and 25 in 2017, 2018. His best game as an Islander is easy to pinpoint. February 13th, 2011, a road game in Buffalo. Uh, Miko Koskinen gets the start in goal for the Islanders, but he's replaced by Il Cubano, Al Montoya, Ryan Miller, the goalie for Buffalo in this one, and Michael Grabner getting a hat trick for the Islanders in this game. He had six shots on goal. The Islanders as a team had only 26. He was a plus one. All three goals coming at even strength. And the last goal uh, was the overtime game winner, Andrew McDonald and Kyle Oposo, assisting at 255 of overtime. And the Islanders beat the Buffalo Sabres by a score of 7-6. to six. Franz Nielsen, Kyle Oposo both had three assists in this game. Montoya with 12 saves and 14 shots to earn the win after replacing Koskinen mid, a little before, uh, you know, early, let's say, in the second period. So Michael Grabner, the speedster, uh, who turns 36 today, he is our Islanders' birthday of the day. I want to thank everybody who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow on the show. We'll have our key takeaways from the game against Philadelphia. We will preview the game against the Devils, and we will continue our player-by-player look at the Islanders with Semyon Varlamov, so make sure you join us for that. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe, and of course, let's go Islanders.